What's going on, Pats Nation? This is the CLNS Media Network's New England Patriots post-game show. I'm your host, Mike Molino, alongside my co-host, Marvin Zahn. Super Bowl Sunday has come to an end, and if you're a Patriots fan, it's not an ending you were looking forward to. The Patriots fall to the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl, 41-33 to in Minnesota. What a game. What a game where... A lot of points were put up on the board, Marv. A lot of yards were put up on the board. I think this game finished with the most combined yards in postseason history. Both teams made a lot of plays, but if you're the New England Patriots, if you're a New England Patriots fan, you're looking at this game right here, and you're probably telling yourself the defense lost this game. I think that's what it boils down to, Marv. Nick Foles, 28 for 43, 373 yards, three touchdowns in this game. Brady, 28 for 48, 505 yards, three touchdowns. These two quarterbacks, they came out to, to play Mike. They balled out incredibly. Nick Foles got the W because at the end of the day, the Eagles made more defensive plays than the New England Patriots. So much to tackle here. You could talk about Malcolm Butler not being played, whether – he was in the doghouse because he was playing special teams. The, the coverage, not being able to stop the run. Like Garrett Blunt went 14 carries, 90 yards, and he had a touchdown. They also struggled against Jay Ajayi, nine carries with 57 yards. And then Corey Clement in the receiving game, four receptions, 100 yards. The backfield was killing the New England Patriots. And 41 points, that's what happened. You can't, you're not going to win most games if you let up 41 points, even if you have Tom Brady who's thrown for 500 yards. Eagles made more defensive plays than the New England Patriots, and that's why they lost. Yeah, uh, the defense, again, I mean, I think when ESPN and all the sports channels and networks has their highlights, they're probably going to look back at that strip fumble that happened against Tom Brady <clears throat> right there in the fourth quarter as Brady in the past – we're trying to make a final drive. Uh, but that's not where the game was lost. In all honesty, the game was not lost on that play where Brady fumbled. The game was lost from the first quarter all the way through the fourth quarter where the defense just could not stop Nick Foles in this offense. Players were left wide open, making unbelievable catches. Clement had a great game where he was pretty much having his way. On top of that, the defense beat themselves up, not being able to make solid tackles. Letting guys, you know, catch the ball and picking up those yards after the reception. It just seemed like everything that Nick Foles wanted to do with his weapons out there, they were able to succeed. The third downs, the fourth downs, they were picking up everything. The trick plays, they just seemed a step ahead of the New England Patriots in the defense. They seemed stronger. They seemed faster. They seemed tougher. They seemed more mentally locked into the game. And it's surprising to see from a team that, you know, all year long, they have this bend, not break mentality. You know what I mean, we've seen opposing quarterbacks, you know, at times have their way against the New England Patriots in the defense. But somehow, some way, the defense usually finds a, made, a way to make a key stop, you know, not giving up, giving up points in the red zone. The defense finds a way. But today, it seemed like that bend, not break mentality was completely out the window. And, and, you know, like I said, Eagles and Nick Foles in his offense, they were just having all the way, all, you know, having their way with the Patriots defense. That's what it seemed like from start to finish, in my opinion. The defense finally broke, 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 and 41 points is all you need to, all you need to see when it, when it comes to that. Um, not having Butler was huge, Mike, because then you start putting guys in like Richards, who's not ready for the big, didn't seem ready for the big moment. You had Chung out there playing corner. You know, he was he played a good game, but he did a lot of players out of position. The thing that really struck a nerve to me is in the first half, you know, Patriots have always been playing from behind, it seems like, in, this, in these Super Bowls. And you, we always wonder why they can't get it right early on. Why in the world was Stephon Gilmore not on Alshon Jeffrey to start off this game? It's, it's so questionable. It's really questionable, like, it took them to the second half to really figure that out. When going into this game, you know, I bet most Pat fans even thought, hey, Alshon Jeffries the biggest guy. You know, Stephon Gilmore is our best corner. Put him on there. He's been taking care of all these big corners. Alshon Jeffrey balled out, especially in the first half. 
He was three three receptions, 73 yards, one one touchdown, and then he wasn't hurt from ever again once Jeff um, Gilmore was on him. It, it, it was it's just befuddling. Zach Ertz, another guy, you know, going to the game. He made some big third down, fourth down play, seven receptions, 67 yards. The Patriots could not get off the field. And speaking on the first half, Mike, a player who didn't seem ready for the moment, Brandon Cooks. You saw a mm -hmm. couple times where he was just, you know, he got the ball, he tried to hurdle over a defender where you could have tried to outrun him or go out of bounds. Then the second catch he had, he was going backwards, trying to make plays. He was doing things that were not Brandon Cooks like, and then he got taken out the game with a concussion. You know, it sucks to see a guy so so beneficial to the team go out that way, but it just Brandon Cooks didn't look right out there. Yeah, I mean, Brandon Cooks has been, I think, in some you know people's opi opinion, the Iron Man for the Patriots. He's been on the field, you know, for every game. A lot of offensive snaps. He's usually out there, but like I was telling you earlier, in this big Super Bowl matchup, he really showed his age. I think he's what 23 years old, 24, yeah. 24 years old. And when the lights came on bright in the Super Bowl, I think the bright the lights were just a little too bright for Brandon Cooks. And then you saw him out there doing things that you haven't seen him do in all games the Patriots have played in the season. I don't think Brandon Cooks has ever tried to hurdle anybody. I don't even know if he was really trying to hurdle people even when he was in New Orleans. And then the other play where he got taken out after the big hit, you have this guy, you know, a guy who usually catches the ball and just goes down. He picks up his yards unless it's, you know, down the field and he's going straight on. If Brady finds him in the middle of the field, he usually, you know, makes the reception, he goes down, and lets the play can continue to move on. But on that play in particular, you saw Brandon Cooks catch the ball and his head's going left and right. He's trying to do moves, shift around, and then <laughs> out of nowhere, he gets his block knocked off. And then result, he's out of the game. But I give, a, I give credit to Tom Brady and the defense. I mean, the offense. I'm sorry. Tom Brady, you know, I was looking at the game and his stats. And in my opinion, you know, obviously the fourth quarter, he had a lot of incompletions and the fumble, but this is probably one of the best games Tom Brady has played offensively, not only throughout his career, but in all the Super Bowls he's appeared in. This guy finished 28 or 48 for 505 yards and three touchdowns. That's pretty solid. If you look at stats like that, quarterback is probably winning this game. You know, Patriots put up 33 points. You know, that's a lot of points. A lot of points to put up in a Super Bowl where, you know, the game's usually close, a lot of back and forth. But then you look on the defensive side of things, the Patriots give up 41 points. Patriots have been giving up 40 plus points since week one against the Kansas City Chiefs. And that is, and they look exactly like that Patriot team. Uh, to give up you know, that many points in the biggest game of the season, it just completely, in my opinion, falls on the defense. And I think, you know, the storyline for the Eagles is they played a great game. Nick Foles looked unbelievable. They, they did everything they wanted to do. But I think the storyline for the Patriots, in my opinion, if I had to write it, the defense let them down. Point blank, period. I, you know, I think Tom Brady and his weapons did everything they could, especially after the fact that you lose Cooks. I think Tom Brady and his weapons did everything they possibly could to try to stay in this game. As many times as Nick Foles and, and, and his team, you know, took the lead and, and, and tried to separate, Tom Brady was right there to respond. But in the end, you know, those third down plays, those fourth down plays, those not being able to tackle, you letting guys get those extra yards, it all bit the Patriots in the butt, and which led to, you know, the loss that the Patriots suffered here in the Super Bowl. You know, looking through the comments, a lot of disappointing faces. A lot of people are sad. If you can hear in our voices, we we are upset with you guys. Um, one thing here, so, someone meant, Teddy mentioned, you know, shows how important Edelman is to Brady in the past. But Mike, you said it, but Edelman wasn't the reason why you know the Patriots didn't win this game. The defense really, the the defense couldn't get anything going in this game, and. Last year, even though the Patriots won, they went into this offseason as if they had lost. You know, they really brought in some firepower into this offense. If you look at this defense, Mike, you have a lot of no names. You have a lot of like guys like Marquise Flowers, the Lees, the Battle Moses, Jonathan Jones. You have, you know, guys who are not big name players. Richards was out there and 
they got exposed by Nick Foles. Not not someone spectacular, not a spectacular quarterback, but Nick Foles killed him. You couldn't get off the third down, the fourth down. And give credit to Doug Peterson, man. That guy has a lot of stones. Like he made some calls that most most coaches would never even think twice about doing, and they it paid off. It, it paid off completely. I mean, just in agreeing with what you're saying there. Peterson has some huge stones. And the fact that you look at uh, a couple weeks ago when the Patriots played the Jacksonville Jaguars, and before the second half ended, the Jacksonville Jaguars had a chance to, to maybe try to get his field goal position or something. But, you know, the knowing they're facing the Patriots, probably being a little sh scared, wanting to be secure with their score, they just elected to let the clock run out. Not Doug Peterson. In situations, fourth down, fourth and one, whatever the case may be, he went for it. You know, Nick Fold had that touchdown reception. Uh, another big place happened where they were able to continue to drive because they just took that chance. And it looked like they were playing with no fear. You know, there's always a talk about teams going up against the Patriots and they have this fear that all oh, it's the Patriots, the, the Mystique, the Brady, the Belichick, those guys out there. I'm telling you, the Eagles stepped into this game and played very fearless. On top of the fact that, again, in my opinion, the Patriots defense was a complete and utter failure in terms of what they wanted to accomplish today. If you would have told me that this would have been the final score of the Super Bowl, I would have said, no way, Nick Foles not putting up that many points. But another key, another key thing in this game, I know Patriots lost by eight points, but the the miss extra field goal and the extra point changes the whole game. I get it. It's four points less, but it changes the way the scheme goes in the fourth quarter when you're coming back, when you use your timeouts, how, how you position the field. You know, maybe you, all you needed was a field goal to um, to tie the game. Eagles want to be going for two points for that. You know, it changes the whole dynamic of everything when you, when you leave that many points behind, especially in the first half. And it came to bite the Patriots. Last year, you know, luckily, Pitchers were able to move down the field and get and hit a couple of two-point conversions. Pitchers didn't have the chance to even do that this game. You know, Steven Guskowski, that extra point, huge. And then Ryan Allen fumbling the hole. Those are plays that cannot happen in the Super Bowl. It's just, it, it's, and it's unheard of for a Bill Belichick team to go into the Super Bowl and to make huge mistakes like that. That's just, it's it's incredible to see, honestly. All right, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. <clears throat> I am too. I mean, again, just looking at the game from start to finish, I, I'll say it over and over and over again. The Patriots defense failed them in this matchup. Looking at the comments here and seeing some 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 fans are saying, I guess, countdown who's in Philadelphia, saying that Philly is going crazy right now. Fireworks are popping off. You know, we're at a location right now. As you can see, we're not in our usual location. And we have some Philly fans who are around us. And you know, this is the greatest thing to, to happen to us. I mean, to, to them, them, to them, I'm sorry. This is the greatest thing to happen to them getting the Super Bowl victory. Uh, you know, the way that I look at, look at it is for Patriots fans out there, the Patriots have been to nine Super Bowls over you know, their, their time in the NFL. They've been to nine Super Bowls. Brady and Belichick have been to eight. They've been fortunate to win five. They've lost three or yeah, three, no, four, I'm sorry, in total. Uh, you know, some other organizations like the Philadelphia you know, Eagles, they don't get an opportunity to always be in this position. I'm not trying to jump too far ahead to next season or anything like that, but you look at this team and the offense and Brady's playing at the high level that he is. You get Edelman back, you have pretty much the same with his. Chances are pretty likely that the Patriots – can be in a position to make it to the Super Bowl again. Obviously, first and foremost, this defense has some areas that needs to be fixed. When you're depending on a 40-year-old James Harrison to be your, your, your guy to rush the passer, it's not <laughs> gonna work. The Patriots put themselves in a, a big hole early and you know, at, at some point, at some point it's gonna get to you. And this was the point in the Super Bowl. And the reason why this one hurt so much is because the offense had such a great game. Let's highlight some of the Patriot players who played very well in this game. Chris Hogan, huge game by Chris Hogan, especially when 
um, and then Cooks went out. Six receptions, 128 yards, and a touchdown. Danny Amendola, once again, great game, playoff Amendola. Eight receptions, 150 yards. Gronk, nine receptions, 116 yards. When have you seen three receivers go over 100 <laughs> yards? It, it was <laughs> – the whole time when you're watching this game, all you're just saying is the, if the defense can just get one stop, if they can get one stop, and they did, they, and they didn't. You know, they let that touchdown happen, and Brady had to march down the field with ten, at the 10-yard line, March 9th, and it just didn't work out. You know, the strip fumble happened. They defend, <laughs> They were protecting Brady all game. Great job protecting Brady, and that play just happened. And things like that happen, especially when you're just – you have to come back each time and, and let this team score at ease, Mike. It wasn't like Nick Foles was struggling scoring on this team. Third down, fourth down, they knew they were going to make it. Aguilar, I know we was watching a couple people. They said he was looking like Antonio Brown out there. You know, Aguilar had a great game for the Eagles. Nine receptions, 84 yards. <laughs> Malcolm Butler is going to be the biggest question mark story of this game from the Patriots side is where the hell was he? What was going on? Why did he play? It was it the illness. It, I can tell you one thing. Malcolm Butler is not on this team next year. I can say that to you guys right now. Whatever is going on, he's not on this team. And it, Belichick pretty much made that clear. But it screwed, screwed, screwed the Patriots defense. Yeah, a lot of struggles, you know, were highlighted in this in this game today, and a lot of struggles that the Patriots have had all throughout the season. You know, what a game for them to really show up big time in the biggest game of the year. You know, looking at the stats, Nick Foles wasn't sacked once. Nick Foles wasn't sacked once. Same shame. And I've said, I say this all the time to anybody who wants to talk football. I don't care if you're Tom Brady. If there's a solid pass rush, the whole game is screwed up. Now, for the, on the Patriots side of things, Tom Brady was protected pretty much very well for the most part. He was a sack one time, but for the most part, he had pretty solid protection. You know, 28 or 48, 505 yards, he had pretty solid protection to have a game happen like that. But Nick Foles, a guy who was not even in the same conversation as Tom Brady, you figure you can rattle a guy like Nick Foles with a solid pass rush, with some solid pressure put on him. And it just wasn't there. To see and, and look at the stats and the game finish and Nick Foles wasn't even sacked once, you know, that's that's something that has to be addressed. I know we say this year in and year out, but the Patriots' lack of a pass rush is an issue. Obviously, some people might say, well, there was no Dante Hightower. You know, that's they're probably best if one of the best defensive players. I understand that. But, you know, some teams, a lot of the good defensive teams in the league, they don't just depend on one guy to be their pass rush. They have maybe one or two guys or maybe three guys that say, oh, you got to watch out for him and him and him. They can all bring that pass rush. So if you're going to sit here and say, well, there's no darn to high tower. That's why they didn't have a real solid pass rush. That's a problem, in my opinion. That's something that the Patriots need to address moving forward. I mean, obviously, after this game and moving forward, Josh McDaniels is gone. Matt Patricia is out the door. So there's a whole new coaching staff probably coming in, maybe some new schemes, you know, at the end of the day, it's all going to fall under the Belichick and what he wants done with this team. But the defense, pers the defensive personnel needs to be addressed. The pass rush needs to be, be addressed because to end off the season with this performance, giving up 41 points, you know, missed tackles, third down opportunities squandered. It's just... The Patriots have a lot to look at moving forward but after coming off of this loss in the Super Bowl. Got a question. Do you think this will lead to a continued success for the Eagles? Absolutely. Carson Wentz is going to be the quarterback for the future. We've seen what he did, you know, when he was quarterback in this team. Nick Foles is going to get a big contract somewhere else. And they, they got guys signed, man. They got, got, they got Alshon Jeffries signed up. Wentz signed up, Cox signed up, Jenkins signed up. So they they really got a core there. And the Eagles going to be a team to watch out for in the near future. Patriots have a lot of question marks now. With <laughs> when when you don't win this when you don't win this big game right here, a lot of question marks start happening. You mentioned the coordinators that we lose. You mentioned the rift between the top three heads: Brady, Kraft, and Belichick. You we don't have a court. We don't have a backup quarterback. Brady played a fantastic game. We hope he can do this for another two, three years, but you, you need to have a quarterback. Brady goes down. Do you trust the, the gaming Hoyers 
for your no, you don't. You don't trust Hoyer at all. So a lot of question marks. Belichick's gonna be question about Butler. Let's see what let's see what he says, you know, about this in because that's Mike, I'm I don't know, only using him on in special teams. That means you're you're putting him in a doghouse. Something happened. You know, I know they were saying he was sick and whatnot, but I think it's deeper than that. If he was so sick that he couldn't play, why even dress him? If he's so sick, why even put him out there on special teams? If the guy's sick, you know, he's an actor. You can't play. Keep him on the bench. But the fact that he was dressed up and he was on special teams tells me he was healthy enough to play, but Belichick and the coaches have chose for a reason not to put him on the field on defense. Something happened with, with Malcolm Butler that, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, you know, information will come out as to why Malcolm Butler didn't have, you know, a big part in this game. There was a reason he was not on the field defensively. And that storyline will come out hopefully eventually and we'll all find out. But, yeah, I know Malcolm Butler, you know, defensively has struggled a couple of games. He's given up some big plays. His coverage has been a little shaky. But I still think I would trust him out there on the field over a row and a better mosey and and the other guys that the Patriots tried to throw up there. I would still, you know, the biggest game of the season, the Super Bowl, I think, you know, people would trust having a combination of Gilmore and Butler on the field instead of Gilmore and, you know, these second and third and fourth string guys that were thrown on the field. It's just, oh, man, I'll say it before I say it again. The defense let the New England Patriots down in the Super Bowl matchup. Listen up, Hoop fans. Basketball season is back. And now that you have your favorite heroes have returned to the action, it's, it's up to you to do have I can't even I can't even do these live reads, <laughs> man. I'm all messed up. Every night, one day fantasy basketball at DraftKings.com. At DraftKings, there are so many ways to play. Choose from the public contest and huge cash prizes or private contests where you can complete compete against your friends. They even got beginner and casual contests where you'll play against people with similar skill sets. Just as Dan is from St. Louis and Jeremy from Austin, they both turn $3 into a $1,000 entry. Call to action. Use your CLNS, CLNS at DraftKings.com to play free with your first deposit to share of ten thousands of dollars you can win tonight. Don't wait. Use code CLNS on DraftKings.com now to choose your lineups and you can Win serious cash tonight. That's called C L N S. One comment that I'm seeing here, and I agree with the comment. Uh, let me see who it came from. Came from Celtic Bird. And he said Nick Foles played a great game tonight. Got to give the man his due. I agree with you 100. Nick Foles came out. He surprised me. His poise in the pocket. The passes he was making, he, he didn't surprise me. He played a great game, you know. Again, I don't think he's in the same conversation as Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, the other elite quarterbacks in the league. So to see him come out in this big game, the biggest game he's probably ever played in his career, and he played the way he did, I'll give him credit. His stats are pretty solid. At the same time, I feel like the the Patriots defense gave him too much confidence out on the field. If you're not putting any pressure on a quarterback and he can stand in a clean pocket, not worry about, have to worry about getting hit, he'll find people. He'll find players down the field. Any quarterback will. So while, yes, Nick Foles played a great game at the same time, I think Patriots let this guy who is not, you know, a star quarterback in his league, they gave him too much confidence for him to be successful. Another comment saying Eric Rowe was a massive <laughs> disappointment. I mean, Eric Rowe was never supposed to be in a position to defend an uh, Alshon Jeffrey. When and ever do you go into a game plan saying Eric Rowe is going to be covering Alshon Jeffrey? Eric Rowe is going to be covering Avalar. It, it just doesn't make sense. You put Eric Rowe in a tough position, and he, he, didn't, he didn't deliver. McCordy, another guy who had a horrible game. Missed tackle, let that um the Earths touchdown. You know, Harmon, he had that interception early, but he was missing the safeties were missing tackles all over the place. Linebackers were missing tackles. It 
it was a bad game from the defense. We just <laughs> this as simple as we can say it. The scheme weren't there. Butler didn't play. A lot of questionable things, and the offense did everything they could. They they held that front four as best as they could for as long as they could. And Brady had time, and when he had time, Mike, he delivered. Give it up to the Eagles. They did everything right. They didn't shoot themselves in the foot. They played the perfect game plan, didn't shoot themselves in the foot. When they needed to score, they scored. When they needed a big stop at the end of the game, they got the big stop. And that's how you that's how you're gonna win. That's how you beat the Patriots. 41 points is what you need to beat the Patriots, and they got 41 points. Real talk, you know. Most of the time you want to beat the New England Patriots, you have to outscore them. And that's what the Philadelphia Eagles did. They outscored the Patriots. They played with a lot of confidence. That's one thing I would definitely say about the Philadelphia Eagles. And a lot of people out there were coming in looking at this matchup, saying that, you know, Eagles are not even on the same level as the Patriots. Nick Foles is gonna crumble this and that, but they really stepped up into the Super Bowl matchup and played with a lot of, a lot of confidence, confidence. And I think that comes from, you know, the coaches and then it goes trickles right on down because if the coaches is confident to call these fourth, third down plays, you know, the, the players are going to have the confidence because they see their coaches believe in them and that it makes it easy for them to go on the field and try to execute on top of the fact that you have a defense that's just playing so poorly. I've never seen a team just miss so many tackles and are not able to wrap up as much as I've seen from the Patriots this season. This has just been a reoccurring theme. It's obviously highlighted a lot in the Super Bowl matchup, but this has been a reoccurring theme all season long with the Patriots not being able to tackle, not being able to wrap guys up, letting guys break free for, you know, gain another three, four, five yards, or whatever the case may be. A lot of the problems that the Patriots have suffered from throughout the course of this regular season. Obviously, they finished, what, 13-3? and three. Uh, good, good, season. good season. They finished 13-3, and three, but a lot of that is due to Tom Brady being the quarterback of the New England Patriots and is able to put up points on the board. Though the game that Nick Foles had tonight, we've seen many quarterbacks throughout the course of the season yeah. have awesome performances against the New England Patriots throughout the course of the season. I'm thinking back to week one. Kansas City put up 42 points. Drew Brees put up 36. You know, uh, Deshaun Watson for Houston put up points. Cam Newton put up yards and points. You know, this is something that the Patriots have been doing all season long defensively, letting opposing teams put up points. You know, looking at the first four weeks of the, of the, of the season for the Patriots, 42 points given up, 20 points given up, 36 points given up, 33 points given up. This type of season is what the Patriots have been having all year long and for the Patriots to really blow the biggest game. It sucks, but at the same time, in all honesty, how surprised are you? You can't be too surprised that the Patriots defense played the way they did. You're right, Mike. You nailed it on the head. Another disappointing thing was the fact that they they let LeGarrie Blount, the, run, they just let the running backs really get those five, six, seven yards on them. And the play action was able to, they were able, they were bid on the play actions. You know what I'm saying? We heard it all week, RPO, the RPO, the RPO. And you know that was going to be a focus, but the Patriots were not able to stop it at all. It was, it was, it was so, it was so simple. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm one guy who said coming into this game, I did not think Laguerre Blunt was going to be a huge factor in this game. game. Wow. I, he made me eat my words 100%, and he was a huge factor into why uh, the Eagles were able to put up 41 points. Looking at a comment from Celtics Bird, he said, this was also Matt Patricia's final game with the Pats. Not sure how I'd feel if I was a fan of the Lions after this. See ya. If I was a fan of the Lions and I saw how, you know, first of all, if you're a Lions fan and you're watching this show, hear it from my mouth first. I don't like Matt Patricia as a coach, and I think he's not a good defensive coach at all. And this final performance that he had with the New England Patriots doesn't surprise me that that's how it went. And I wish you all the best of luck when he's your head coach over there because I think Matt Patricia, he can get a sorry in my opinion, but we'll get to that section of the show real soon. Mm-hmm. Again, <laughs> final score, 41 33 
Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl over the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, to make light of this situation, I don't think this loss takes away from Bill Belichick's greatness. Oh, not at all. Tom Brady's greatness. Obviously, you know, some people compare him to Montana and say, well, Montana never lost in the Super Bowl, this and that. If you want to have that conversation, I'm sure you, you can make an argument if you choose to. But, you know, the performance that Brady had, just looking at stats wise, at 40 years old, what 40 year old quarterback is putting up the stats that he did in the Super Bowl? Three touchdowns, throwing for over 500 yards. He won the MVP of the season. If Brady can, you know, if you watch Tom versus time, you see all the preparation that goes into Tom Brady. If he's willing, you know, to mentally put that work in in the offseason, you know, Alex Guerrero, his right hand hand man, is able to, you know, do the work he does for Brady. There's no reason why, as long as the pitch is put out the right, you know, offensive weapons and have the right protection in front of him, there's no reason why I don't see Tom Brady duplicating this performance, Bill Belichick duplicating this performance, and being pretty much right back in this position next year, as long as they take care of what they need to take care of on the defensive side of the ball. They did. They they made a lot of work moves, you know, in this last offseason, especially on the offensive field. You're bringing a Stephon Gilmore from last year who you who's going to be a Patriot for a while now. You sign them up long term. Continue working on this defense. You got Derek Rivers, who you drafted last year, who, de- who never played. You know, Hightower, who's coming back. And go get a free agent. Continue, first couple rounds, get some defensive players. Start start working on this defense. You know, who, we don't know who this defensive coordinator is going to be, but we know that Belichick is hands-on with the defense anyway. So, the defense has to be the main priority. Luckily, you know, this wasn't a game where you're like, oh, man, Brady has fallen off. Mm-hmm. The man threw for 500 yards. If you thought Brady had a bad game or something, you, you, I don't know what you were watching. <laughs> you don't know football. Pretty much plain and simple. Brady looked good out there. The offensive weapons looked good. Hogan, Amendola, you bring in Edelman back. Cooks, you know. Some positive signs going forward. You know, this, you, you know for a fact the Patriots are not going to self-implode going into next year. And then how do you how do you work onto this defense? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of things that can be done. Again, you know, offensively, defensively, to have the Patriots back in this position going into the 2018 season. Uh, but with that being said, I mean. In the Belichick Brady era, they are now five and three in Super Bowls. Um, I give them a lot of credit again for even making it to the Super Bowl. I think that's one thing that some, you know, New England Patriots fans take for granted is the yeah. fact that the Patriots are in this position almost every year. They're in the AFC Championship game. They're in Super Bowls. They have successful regular seasons. You know, they're able to fight through the playoffs. So one thing that well, I hope most Patriots fans probably do is you know, be grateful that you watched a Super Bowl in February, you know, when other teams can't even sniff a playoff berth. The Patriots had a chance to go back to back in the Super Bowl. You know, it's now four years. They have two Super Bowls under their belt. Uh, got to give credit to what Brady and Belichick is able to accomplish year in and year out. And you got to figure as long as, you know, they keep most things intact, uh, they can probably be in this position again next season. Marv. <laughs> With that being said, Mike, I think we got to go into the stars and the stars of the game. We can get into the st- <clears throat> excuse me, we can get into the stars and stars for sure. Uh, let us know in your comment in the comments who you think a star of the game was, who you think a sorry of the game was. For me personally, we're going to start with the star of the game. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> We're going to start with the start of the game. I'm going to go with the guy who I've been talking about. i got a couple, actually. First and foremost, Tom Brady. Again, 28-48, 505 yards, three touchdown passes for a 40-year-old quarterback in the Super Bowl. Hell of a performance. Unfortunately, it comes with the loss, but Tom Brady can definitely get a star of the game. I also have to give one to Amendola, Hogan, and Gronkowski, three guys who, you know, stepped up big, had huge performances, you know, all three guys went for over 100 yards receiving. 
Kogan finished with one touchdown. Gronkowski finished with two touchdowns. And Rodolo is Mr. Reliable as usual. So I'll give them a star as well. And I, I, I that's all I can pretty much think of for stars. For, for stars, <laughs> I hope, you know, you got to be fair. Give it to the Eagles. Brandon Graham, the sack, the sack strips, fumble. True. Pretty much seals the game right there. And, you know, the whole Eagles organization, Doug Peterson, like I said, huge, huge stones. He he won them their game, their game. He was great coach, great play calls. You know, those trick plays really got the um, New England Patriots. So give all the credit to the Eagles. I have to give one star to a Patriot, though, a former Patriot. This guy right here, Randy Moss, Hall of Famer. If there's anything good out of New England this weekend, it was Randy Moss becoming the first ballot Hall of Fame. My favorite player, Mike, you know, I love watching this man play every week. He he really, I was always a Patriots fan, but he enlightened me even oh, more, yeah. made me want to become a wide receiver, played played wide receiver in high school while he was on the team and, you know, wanting to be like him. So Randy Moss, Hall of Famer, it's such a joy to see Randy Moss in the Hall of Fame. And yeah, if you saw the video too, there was a video that came out when he found out he was a Hall of Famer, really great video. So Randy Moss, he's definitely a star. Shout out to Moss. Man. Man. I wish he got a ring with the Patriots, but that's a conversation for a different day. But in the Super Bowl, when there's the good and there's the bad, and when you're bad, we tell you, sorry. I already see some comments coming in. Teddy Gonzalez took the sorry right out of my mouth. Sorry, Matt Patricia and the defense. Again, I said it to start the show. I'll say it again right now. The defense let the New England Patriots down in this game. Tom Brady played a hell of a game. The offense was right there battling back, battling back. Another Super Bowl with the Patriots and Brady have to battle back, battle back. But this time around, unlike, you know, the Super Bowl against the Seahawks, the Super Bowl against the Atlanta Falcons, there was not that big stop, that big interception, no. that big fumble, that big three and out. The Eagles were just able to have their way and find everything they wanted to. And the Patriots could not get any stops. They could not force any turnovers, any takeaways. They couldn't force any three and outs. You know, Matt Patricia and defense, if there was a time to play your worst game of the season, they definitely did it in the biggest game of the season. So honestly, Matt Patricia and the defense, from me, from Marv, and from probably all of Pats Nation out there, you guys get a big fat sorry. Also, Steven Goskowski. Ooh, Steven Goskowski. The first one, the first one where uh the punter fumbled. The whole special team. The whole special team is off. But in a time where you're supposed to, you know, put some points on the board with the field goal, extra point, you know, the fumble. When when the snapper caught the ball, or well, snapped the ball, and uh, what's the punter's name? Um, right now, Allen fumbled the ball. Yes, I'll give Guskowski a pass for that. He was still able to catch it in a decent amount of time, and Guskowski tried his best to kick it. He missed it, but once the snap is off and the fumble, it throws everything off. So I'll give him a slide for that. But then he missed another field goal, extra, extra point, extra point, and a field goal he missed in this game. And those are points. I understand extra point is just one point. Field goal is three points. The score is obviously 41 to 33. But like Marv said earlier in the show, you have points on the board. It changes the way you use time and possession and, and timeouts you want to use. It changes a lot of things. And for Guskowski to miss that field goal, that extra point, this guy's got a couple stars from me this season. And for me to give him one in the biggest game of the season, I'm questioning your time as a Patriot, Guskowski. So for myself, from Marv, from everybody else out there who's probably upset, you get a big fat sorry. sorry. Special teams, man, like Teddy mentioned, the Deion Lewis handoff to Burkhead. I'm trying to do way too much. Um, let's lighten up the mood. Celtic Bird, he said something. What do you guys think about the Eli Manning OBJ commercial? Hey, man. Hey, man. That's all, all, I, all I say is this. It was probably 
you know, Beckham, who came up with that idea for the commercial. Oh, yeah. Choreography and everything. That's all I was saying. It was a funny money commercial. But, Mike, you know, this isn't the end of us, too. You know, I know Patriots lost. It's like, oh, no, no more, no more Mike and Mark. Not at all. We aren't going anywhere, guys. You know, Celtics season is still going on. Red Sox are coming up. Bruins are making a little run right Bruins now. Bruins are kind of hot right now. So that means we got to stay. We got to stay on top of things. So we do a little thing called Double M Sports. And we're just going to be talking all Boston sports, local, national, anything you guys want to talk about. It's going to be a little different than a Patriots post game show, but Mike and, Mike and Marv back again doing a whole different type of show. Look out for us. But in order to know what we're doing, you got to follow us on Twitter. Follow me at CLNS underscore Marv Mike. Follow me at CLNS underscore Mike Nice. Like Marv said, be on the lookout. Double M Sports is being resurrected. It's making yeah. his return. Marv and I will be holding it down, talking all sports, not just Patriots and what's happening, you know, post-Super Bowl in the offseason. But like he said, Celtics are hot. Red Sox are coming around with spring training. Bruins are making a run right now. So be on the lookout again. Double M Sports is right around the corner. Marv and I, you know, we can't just end it off after the Patriots lost. That's Obviously, it's especially a on a sour note like yeah. this. We got we got to bounce back. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout again. Marv and I, Double M Sports, that's the name of the show that will be coming right here on the CLNS Media Network. But with all that being said, it's been a hell of a Patriots season. You know, it's tough that it has to end like this for Pats Nation. Everybody was looking for one more, trying to get that sixth ring. But again, like I said earlier, if you're a Patriots fan, be grateful, be humble. And not a lot of other teams get a chance to be in this position with a chance to get another Super Bowl ring. So for the fact the Patriots to be here today playing in February, you know, be grateful for that, that opportunity. And we want to thank you guys for week in and week out commenting, watching, sharing, liking these videos. Because of you guys, we're able to continue on and do what we want to do. This has been a fun, fun season. This is the first time, you know, we're doing this video thing. And you guys really made it a special, special thing. Looking forward to every Patriots game. We can't, con we can't wait to continue to grow with everybody else. So, you know, Celtics fans out there. We're going, we're going to be talking a lot of Celtics. So don't, even, don't even worry about it. But thank you once again. It's been a hell of a year. Super Bowl two years in a row, Mike. You know, let's let's try see if we can do it next year with the ring. Again, for Marvin is on. Mike Molino, this has been the New England Patriots post game show on the CLNS Media Network. Be on the lookout for Double M Sports coming Ooh. soon.